Let's talk about the T-Rex some more. And I've had some time to play with it. I've really had a lot of time to make adjustments and get used to what everything does. So I thought I would do just kind of a quick walkthrough of how to make the adjustments and what the different screws do. Because one of the things that's really unique about the T-Rex is that every adjustment screw you need is out in the open for you to do. You don't have to take the bag off or the top off or anything else like some other rests. This one gives you full access in real time. I've literally made adjustments um, in the middle of a match that I would never be able to make with other uh, rests. Now, in a perfect world, uh, when you've got most of these settings set, uh, you really don't have to mess with them too much, but the fact that you can uh, is pretty cool. So let's talk about the first thing you're gonna wanna do, which is uh, getting the gun balanced up and down, okay? And that's going to be achieved through uh, a certain set of screws. And what I wanna do is show you some of them, then I'm gonna pull the gun off and flip this upside down so I can really show you what's going on underneath. But the first thing we need to talk about are these two tension screws. There's, there's one here, sorry. So there's one and there's two. And before you do anything, you're going to want to, comp you know, back these off a good three or four screws uh, off of tents. So you can feel where it engages, right? Then come back, you know, two or three. And that's the first thing you want to do. And then let me flip this over so I can show you uh, what is underneath and how you're going to want to adjust it. So this is upside down, so everything's inverted. But what you'll see here is there are two screws here. There's an empty hole. And then there's one that's going to be sticking out. And this is how you're going to be getting the rest from rod under most conditions. So let me explain what these do. These are the course adjustments for the balance uh, as it sits right now. And then this is sort of your fine tuning one. Now, technically for F class, you're gonna wanna leave these just slightly above flush. See, uh, see how that is there? So it's just slightly above flush and that's how he ships them. And this is what you need for just about any F class gun, you know, 18 to 22 pounds. If you were shooting a very, very light gun, 15 pounds or less, you know, 12, 10 pounds, whatever, uh, you actually just want to then remove this screw completely. And then there's a spring under there. Um, in fact, let me show you. Okay, so this is what comes out of there. So if you're shooting a very light gun, you would pull that out and then you would take one of these and probably loosen it up just a little bit and then use the other one as sort of your fine tuning, okay? And these do not have to be even. One of these could be uh, tighter than the other and that's why he says on light guns, you would actually just go to two screws, tighten one down until you've got a pretty, pretty coarse adjustment and then use the other one for fine tuning. In my particular case with F-Class, I want to have this third one in to do a little more fine tuning with and I'm going to leave it just maybe three or four threads in. And then you'll notice there's an empty hole that matches this one. This is only used for heavy bench class guns, like um, 40 pound, 50 pound guns. And you wanna make sure if you order one of these for bench rest, uh, for heavy gun, that you talk to Rod about getting that fourth one installed. If it came installed for F class or any other use, it could actually make it a lot more difficult to tune this thing. So that's why they don't come with it. And, and really, I mean, even for a 22 pound gun, you really don't even need this one. It just makes it easier to tune. Now, before I flip this back over, I want to show you two more, two more screws that we want to talk about. This is one and this is the other. Now this one holds the bearing in, this, this bearing that's in there. It just needs to be snug. You do not want to over tighten this one. And if we're looking from the top, okay, we're talking about this one, not this one. So this one just needs to be snug and it's just holding this front bearing in. If you crush it down too much, you will actually deform that bearing and cause um, really erratic motion in your joystick. It's not great. So just snug is all you want. And then this screw that's on the big block is going to control the rotation, right? So, so the, the, the rotation of your joystick. So you can loosen it up or tighten it up however you want it. All right, so let me uh, flip this back over and then I'll show you how we actually adjust this thing. 
So with a gun on and you want your gun and you want it set up the way you would because this is all about balancing weight. So you want your rear bag positioned how it would be. You want to make sure that your front stop is where you want it. You know, you want all of this to be how you would shoot on it. And then what we are going to do, again, we're leaving these two screws just slightly out of flush. And see how, see how when I do this, if I push down, it doesn't want to go back up. And if I push up, it doesn't want to come down. Now, if I had these two screws out of adjustment, then one of these situations would cause it to either bounce up or bounce down. It would be out of balance, okay? So this is nicely balanced. And then what I want to do is just take this, um, take that screw that's sticking down. And I just, I'm turning it till I just barely feel it sort of snug a little bit. And all I'm, all I'm doing now is just getting it to where I like the feel of it. This is just about feeling, okay? So I'm kind of doing about half a rotation at a time. And I'm just getting it where, where it feels really good about balance. This is just about up and down. Like I move it left and right because it's habit, but this is just about the up and down balance where you don't want it to be too, I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. You don't want it to be too stiff because if I tighten it too much, you can feel it sort of spring back a little bit. Okay, so let's, let's go out just a little bit more. Okay, so, so that's, that's where I like it. Now, if I want to make this movement tighter, that's done with these two front screws. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them just till I feel them engage. Okay. And these I like to keep equal. Um, so I'm gonna go quarter turn, quarter turn, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna feel my joystick. Okay, well, that's still, still looser than I like, so let's come back. We're gonna give it another snug and another snug. Oh yeah, so that feels good. And I can always make some little tweaks on the line because you know, I kind of undid my normal setting. Okay, so once you have it there, then you can take these and, and tighten them down so they don't move on you. Okay, and then you're set. Now, let me set up my camera back on my tripod here. And I want to show you something about the joystick that's pretty cool. So let's let's look at the joystick. Now, the way he designs it, this hollow tube slides over the post. And it gives you, as we've talked about, the ability to decide how long you want it. Now, this is a naturally tight fit. I mean, you, you do. It's not going to just slide right on. I mean, you've got to give it a little bit of push because it is a tight fit. One mistake that you can make with this is thinking that you should oil this somehow. You do not want to oil that and you do not want to oil this collet assembly. You want to leave it dry and it's intentionally left dry. So just get used to the fact that it's a little tight. It does break in over time, but you just want it to be naturally tight. Something else about this, and I'm going to show you here. So this collet comes off, okay? And what you've got is you've got this this call it or this um kind of pinch here right and it's got groove on the top and groove on the bottom so what happens is when when you tighten this screw you're applying pressure and squeezing these two together around this the reason this comes off is because rod has designed this so that you can either have hang on a second here so if you wanted to have because there's an angle in it right so if you wanted to have uh let me get it down in line here so if you wanted to have a right-handed shooter and you have the bend going this way and then you can position your tightening on the right side and then if you were to want to turn that you can actually rotate this so that your your tension changes where this is now you can only change it so much because what you want to make sure is that this locker is perpendicular to the groove because you want to make sure it's squeezing and over time it can kind of walk a little bit if you're not careful and if they are lined up like this 
then you will not be applying any pressure and this will be spinning loose on there which can cause some frustration. So just make sure that this is perpendicular to the groove and then life will be grand. Okay. So we get that on, we tighten that up and now it's all good. And like I said, that last screw that's underneath on the silver block controls this rotation. Some guys like it locked down completely where they can't move it at all. I like having a little bit of play in it, right? Because there's times where I want to manipulate the joystick a little bit differently. So I like having a little bit of play in it. But again, gives you a ton of adjustment. That's... Um, you know, that's kind of a walkthrough there. I hope that helps. If you have one of these or you plan on getting one, explain all the different adjustments on it. And uh, that's all I got. So thanks for uh, hanging out and talk to you soon.